Hello everyone, today I'm going to break down the concepts behind the differential equations so that you can understand them fully. And in order to achieve that, first we must look into the definition of the differential equations. So let's start. In the language of mathematics, changing entities are called variables. And the rate of change of one variable with respect to another is called a derivative. Equations which express a relationship between these variables and their derivatives are called differential equations. In both the natural and social sciences many of the problems with which they are concerned give rise to such differential equations. But what we are interested in knowing is not how the variables and their derivatives are related, but only how the variables themselves are related. For example, from certain facts about the variable position of a particle and its rate of change with respect to time, we wish to determine how the position of the particle is related to time so that we can know where the particle was, is or will be at any time t. Alright, now let's look at a real life example. Imagine that you're hiking in a mountainous area where suddenly you come across a cave and as you walk in you notice marvelous charcoal paintings of stags, horses and lions on the walls of the cave and as you're wandering around you ask yourself the question of how long ago the cave dwellers used to live in this cave. In order to answer this question, we need to know a bit of chemistry. And it is well known that all the living organisms contain two isotopes of C, uh, carbon C12 and C14. C12 is a stable and C14 is radioactive. And the radioactivity of C14 is so minute that it's not going to cause harm or damage to the DNA or the, cell or the cells of that organism. So, and from the moment an organism dies, the amount of C14 changes with respect to time. So, it is also worth mentioning that the, um, that the ratio of the amount of each present, um, C12 and C14, in any living organism, basically remains constant. And as I mentioned before, as soon as the animal dies, the C14 is going to change into C12. And in order to determine that, we asking a chemist um, to basically go there and determine uh, the amount of C14 which has been decomposed at the time of death all the way to present. Now let's assume that the chemist has come back to us and told us that 85% of C14 um, at the time of death has decomposed all the way to present. So now in order for us to understand how the decomposition is related to time, we have to use differential equation because uh, remember that we talk about we talked about the differential equation and we mentioned that we are interested in knowing how the variables themselves are related to one and uh, to to each other so um, let's consider t as um, sorry as lapse time and let's consider x as the the amount of C14 present at any time T. Therefore, we can, we can say that the instantaneous rate of change of x 
based on t would be equal to again x however we have to multiply it by a constant because we don't know the total the final amount of x uh, at you know after time t and since the amount is actually decomposing we have to use a minus here to show that x or c14 is changing to something else and is the amount is actually reducing all right now that we have established this relationship between our variables we have to solve this equation um, remember at one point i mentioned that this is the um instantaneous rate of change so it's a it's very like at a very short period of time or one like let's say one second um, however we don't know exactly how long we're looking at uh, in terms of finding how long ago the dwellers used to live in the cave so we have to take the integration of these so when we try to do the integration of let's say dx divided by dt is equal to minus x um, k times x since we have uh, basically dx like the, the composition over time um, we can't do this because the problem is when you do the integration the integration of let's say this is the correct way of integrating something like d of x div uh, like x based on the d of x or with respect to d of x but if you um, basically have the d of x with respect to d of t this is not going to work so what are we going to do now so in order to fix this problem we have to uh, separate our variables and in order to do that we have to take d of x and x on one side and then um, t uh, or d of t on the other side so let me actually clean these so now we're going to say all right d of x divided by x is equal to minus k dt again this is called the separation of the variables so now we have to integrate them so you can write it always also in this format which makes a little bit more sense minus k dt and that will be an integration here too uh, so therefore uh, 1 over x the integration of 1 over x would be actually log of x and the integration on that side on on this side uh, basically is going to be minus k t plus the constant plus c now we have integrated and in order to simplify it even further we um, raise both sides um, by by e so we, we just consider that e to the power of log of x is equal to minus so is equal to e to the power of minus kt plus c all right now let's tidy up a little bit here so i can write it again e to the power of log x is equal to e minus kt plus c and again we can simplify this further by separating um, minus kt plus c here so that will be 
our equation is going to be like this e to the power of log of x is equal to e minus k t times e to the power of c so uh, this term is exactly the same as this one so the only reason that we wrote it this um, in this format because e to the power of c which is a constant this whole term here again is going to be a constant uh, which we can call it a for now uh, therefore our final equation is going to be like this x is equal to e to the power of minus k t times a so now again we can simplify this further so e to the power of log of x is equal to x and our address of equation will remain the same so e to the power of minus kt times a now we consider at time zero uh, which is the time that the tree died time at which the tree died so by doing that we can uh, it's this is also considered as uh, in lots of textbooks they call this as the initial condition so um, you have to normally set up your initial conditions and boundary conditions so this is going to be in the future um, basically lectures I'm going to go through more comprehensive and difficult solutions and in order to solve those you have to have initial conditions and boundary conditions so now we substitute t zero into this equation and our x is equal to, going to be equal to zero times t times a um, any number to the power of zero is, e is going to be equal to one and hence x is going to be is equal to a at time zero all right now we have established at time t our initial amount which is x is equal to a um, and also there was one piece of information that the chemist has also provided to us which is 99.87% of C14 also present at death will also remain in the wood will also remain in the wood after 10 years we can actually write it in this format so when t is equal to 10 years x would be equal to 0.9987 of a so we established that x was equal to a and since we established that 99.87 percent of uh, c14 is going to remain in the wood after 10 years therefore x is going to be equal to 99 uh, sorry 0 0.9987 times a and hence our equation is going to be something like this I'll write it right in front of it so 0.9987a is equal to a e times minus 10k so 
so this was our original formula this was our original formula that we derived and hence after 10 years our equation is going to be something like this format so now um, this side is um, those two a's are going to get cancelled out and we left with 0.9987 is equal to e to the power of minus 10 k and we take the natural logarithm of both sides which would be um, ln of 0 0.9987 is equal to minus 10 k so you use a calculator and if i'm not wrong um, natural logarithm of this number is going to be equal to minus zero 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 one three is equal to minus 10 k and hence k is going to be equal to I just divide that together so k is going to be equal to uh, because you have both minus on the side so it's going to be plus uh, point zero 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 one three all right now let's uh, have a look at our original equation which was um, this one here and we've got to substitute k into this equation so I give it a bit of a space so we can write it clearly so our equation would be x is equal to a times e to the power of minus point zero 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 one three t just make sure that I wrote it correctly yep that is this equation so now um, let's revisit one of the conditions that we were provided by the chemist which was 85.5% uh, of 85.5% of the amount of C14 present at death had basically decomposed so th therefore 100 minus 85.5 is going to left us with 14.5% uh, so 100 minus 85.5% sorry just just ignore that is equal to 14.5% of A is going to be present um, all the way to the present day so now let's go back to our um, equation so this is going to be 0 0.145 a is equal to a times e to the power of minus 0 0.00013 t uh, these a is going to get cancelled out and we're going to left with 0 0.145 is equal to e to the power of minus 0 0.00013 t and we take the log of both sides to simplify it so that will be log of 0 0.145 is equal to um, minus 0 0.00013 t and log of so if you put that in, the, in your calculator you're going to get minus 0.838 is equal to minus 
3 therefore t is going to be equal to 838 8 divided by minus 1 3 which is going to give us 6455 years roughly so that is going to uh, conclude the time that uh, basically dwellers used to live in that cave and what we did we first um, made we made sure that we could relate our variables to one another and from there we establish our initial condition at time uh, t is equal to zero and once we've done that we established that x was equal to a and from there uh, we refer to our boundary condition or the the condition or the information that was provided by the chemist which uh, explained that 85.5 percent of the amount of c14 present at death had decomposed and therefore with this by by deducting 100 by deducting that amount from the 100 we established that 14.5 percent of uh, c14 was present at the time that we were interested in and hence from there we calculated the time and hopefully this has been a very basic introduction to differential equation and um, if you have learned something uh, i hope that you basically looking at you know your future differential equation differently and you'll be able to solve them um, in a more reasonable manner thank you